can do that. Okay. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good to see everybody today. Why don't we uh, get up and shake hands and say hello and give hugs and handshakes this morning and greet one another. You may have already been doing that, but... <laughs> We send our love and our prayers to Cindy this morning in the hospital. We miss you, Cindy. We wish you were here. And we are expecting you to be here Wednesday night. In Jesus' name. So our theme Friday night for the House of Prayer was warfare. I don't know about anybody else, but it's been a rough few weeks. <laughs> the enemy is coming out 
pulling out all the stops and trying to distract us, keep us away from each other, keep us away from what's important, distract us from what really matters. And so um, we read Ephesians chapter 6 about the armor of God. I'm just going to read it this morning. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take up you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, for all of us, that utterance may be given unto us that we may be able to open our mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. And I was immediately reminded of a women's Bible study. I don't remember if you were there, Sally, but I, I talked about the Roman shields. And I've always thought about our shield of faith being something that's like the kid's shield, you know. And the Lord told me to look up this Roman shield. It is chest high, and it covers the entire soldier. But they don't use it for themselves as much because they're really heavy to take in a one-on-one -on -one battle. They are for everybody. They are to protect the entire group. And their warfare is when they see an attack coming, they link arms, they sit these shields down, and they are impenetrable. They create a force field. It is around them, it is above them, the people behind them link up. It is unstoppable. Nothing can get through. And the Lord reminded me this morning, that's our warfare. Put up your shield. That's it. That is all we do to be victorious in our God. It is his battle. He tells us over and over and over and over, and so I'm just going to read over and over and over and over this morning to remind us. 2 Corinthians 20, 15. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. I don't care how much, I don't care what, I don't care who, I don't care what. It is God's. He will bring victory. Zechariah, and here, let's just go in order here. I have all my little pages marked. No, not that one. That's me. It's my personal marker, sorry. Uh, Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. And then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto, unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of the hosts. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted it exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And lastly, I want to read Exodus chapter 14. Exodus 14, 13 through 14. And Exodus 14, 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall never see them again. The Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. And the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. I don't know how much more clear he can make it. Hold your peace. Don't worry. Let me. Stand still. It is that shield of faith, that shield of faith that is so important. And as I was thinking about this, I thought, so what's our, what, 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 is our, what is our armor, right? Our armor is truth. 
Our armor is righteousness. Our armor is peace. Our armor is faith. Our armor is salvation. Our armor is the Holy Spirit himself who lives and breathes and moves and has his being in us. It is the word of God. So when we put up our shield of faith, what does it tell us in chapter 6 to do? Pray. Watch. And speak God's word. That is victory. There's nothing more to it. We link together, we come together, we are protected, and we wait and we worship God because he's good. And the battle can rage all around us, but God is good. And we are praying, and we are watching, and we are expecting to see God's salvation today. We are expecting Sydney's healing today. We are expecting breakthrough and victory today. That is our promise. So I don't care what the enemy's doing. I don't care what. Today, we will see victory if we will wait, if we will trust our faith, the faith that God has given us. It's the faith of Jesus Christ. It's not even our faith. We will trust in him. But we have to pray. We have to pray for one another. And lastly, I want to pray, I want to read out of the um, Amplified Bible, chapter 6, verse 10. In conclusion... Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. We're one. It's not just our union with him. The hour of us being able to do it on our own is gone. We need each other. The power of God is in the coming together of his people where he can be magnified. God said where two or three are gathered, here am I in the midst. And watch what God will do. We are empowered through our union with him and our union with each other. Draw your strength from him, then strength which he, with with his boundless might, provide. His boundless might. But we get strength from each other. We are one with him. We are one with each other. So why let us not forsake that? Let us find a way to connect. If we could be in this building, let's find a way to connect. When we have a need, when there is something going on, find somebody to link arms with, to put up that shield of faith with. To say, I can't even lift this shield right now. Will you come and link arms with me? And we will stand. And we will praise God together. We will pray. We will watch. And we will speak the word of God. And victory is yours every time in Jesus' name. Professor testimonies this morning. Yeah, Mike. Thank you. Uh, I just want to leave um, not as a normal prayer, just stay hold of them that I do want to do some reading. Um, hopefully, it will go into tomorrow, but I was talking to uh, the Christ lady and just do a few readings um, here and there with it because the scriptures and the Bible says the same thing. The fellowship of Christ is the same thing. Did you have something too?
Look up pictures. It's wonderful to look up pictures on the internet. It's amazing. I'll post one on Facebook later. <laughs> Amen, sister. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Debbie, did you want to share? No. Oh, Debbie, sorry.
stand and go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We link arms, Lord. We lift up one voice together today, Lord. Thank you that it is finished. That it is finished, Lord. Every battle, every situation, it is complete, Lord. Renew our minds by your word, Lord. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord, by your spirit, Lord. And we trust you, Lord. We trust that you are good, Lord, that you have brought the victory, Lord. That today, today, right now, we see the promises manifest in every situation. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you that it is finished, Lord, for every need, Lord. That you continue to draw those that are hungry, Lord, those hungry hearts, Lord, that you continue to draw them to your people to speak life, to speak life and truth and grace into the hearts of the hungry, Lord, the hearts of the wounded, the hearts of the lost, that your body will function in the perfection that you have created, this body, this house, this house of prayer.
struck by the image that when they lock those shields together, when they lift those shields up above them, they don't see the battle. Those soldiers inside those shields, they're not worried. They're not stressing. They don't even know what's coming at them, and they don't care because they know they're victorious. God says, trust me. Trust me. And it is finished. worship team will be going to Heartland uh, Church in Ankeny on uh, Saturday. Well, they're doing a 24-hour prayer burn the 17th and 18th, and we will be participating on Saturday from 5 to 7. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tom Stamen will be here uh, July 24th. Do we know what day of the week that is? Is that a Friday? Friday night. Friday night. Friday, July 24th. Tom Stamen will be here. Uh, invite anybody. You're, I'm thinking of Sierra especially. Um, her, her friends, anybody. Um, he has a real true gift with the young people. All right, let's speak the word this morning. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Toby and John, you want to come take the offering for us this morning, please? James. Over all the earth, you reign on high. 
time every mountain stream every sunset sky but one request lord my only aim is that you reign in me again lord reign in me reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour you are the lord of all i am so won't you reign in me again Over all the earth you reign on high every mountain stream every sunset sky but my one request Lord my only aim is that you reign in me again Lord reign in me reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour you are the Lord of all I am so won't you reign in me again reign in me again Lord reign in me again over every thought over every word may my life reflect the beauty of the lord do me more to me than any earthly thing so won't you reign in me again lord reign in me reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour you me are to hour of all i am so won't you reign in me voices lord reign in me reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour you are the lord of all i am so won't you reign in me again lord reign in me reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour you are the lord of all i am so won't you reign in me again so won't you reign in me again so won't you reign in me Thank you, Jesus. You are the King of kings, and you are the Lord of lords. Lord, we keep our eyes upon you and not our circumstances, because you have the end results of what's going on, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your love and your mercy that endures forever. You're the Lion of Judah, the Lamb who was slain. You ascended to heaven and evermore will reign. At the end of the age when the earth you reclaim, you will gather the nations before you. And the eyes of all men will be fixed on the Lamb who was crucified. For with wisdom and mercy and justice you reign at your father's side. And the angels will cry, Hail to the Lamb who was slain for the world. You're the Lion of Judah, the Lamb that was slain. You ascended to heaven and evermore will reign. At
at the end of the age when the earth you reclaim you will gather the nations before you and the eyes of all men will be fixed on the lamb who was crucified for with wisdom and mercy and justice you reign at your father's side and the angels will cry With a shield in our hand and a sword in our sight, and the fire in our spirits that cannot be denied, and the Father has told us, for these you have died, and the nations that gathered before you, and the ears of all men need to hear of the Lamb who was crucified. Who descended from heaven, yet was raised up to reign at your Father's side. And the angels will cry, Hail to the Lamb, who was slain for the world. call out to the north and the south and the east and the west. Those that were supposed to be here today, those whom I called, the Spirit is drawing, Lord, bring them in. Bring them in from the north and the south and the east and the west. Take care.
has mercy on the sinner. Come, 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 all you who are lost. Come, 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 he will fill you with his spirit. You've got to come, Satan, you're lost. Jesus did it all by hanging on the cross. As the grandfather, Lord, seeks your face for the generations wandering around so lost, so gone. Even 
been so kind. Hear the voice of the Lord, a generation walking in the streets. Hear the Spirit of the Lord calling out to you. And the prayers of the saints, and the prayers from the bride coming out, coming out to you. of the world in you. But the love of the Lord can wash away anything, anything. You say you have too much of the world in you that you can't be used by the Lord. His love is stronger than the world. His love is stronger than the world. His love is stronger than the world. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. His love than the world. His love is stronger than the world. So reach out. you have done, no matter what's keeping you away, come as you are, come as you are, into the arms of love. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
reach out to the Lord. Scripture says he's not far from any one of us, even in our mouth. When we, res when we speak the word, you know, it's like we, we have these confessions every service. We, it isn't like we believe that just because we're saying stuff, it happens. We're saying what God has already said. We're just amening what the amen has spoken. We're just declaring that to be the reality. We're not, we don't have the ability as individuals to make anything happen. But as believers in Christ, we have the ability to bring to pass what God has already spoken, to bring it into this realm by faith. And the way we show that faith is by saying what God says, by renewing our mind to what the Word says rather than what the world is saying. We've heard it from everybody here this morning. It's just a simply a matter of trusting God. Jesus has done all the faithing that needs to be done. All we need to do is trust in the finished work of his faith. And it shall come to pass even as we speak. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand clap this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. The young people can be dismissed to go to their classes. And thank you, worship team, as always. Great, great job. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. If I seem extremely uncomfortable this morning, it's only because this is the first time I've worn socks since May. <laughs> the Lord. And... Oh, hallelujah. It's a little awkward up here. I feel way taller than I have for quite a while. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to carry on the kind of the direction that the Holy Spirit's already been leading throughout all of the preliminary part of the service or all of the uh, previous part of the service uh, in the, everything that has been said and, and the prayer requests as well as the testimonies and prophetic words that have gone forth as well. Praise the Lord. So let's start. Let's just... Uh, Sheila, if you will, let's start with Romans chapter 3, and we'll read verses 21 through 28. Romans 3, 21 through 28. Praise God. Hallelujah. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Notice that. It's the righteousness of God, which is by the faith of Jesus Christ, and it's for or unto all and upon all them that believe. Because there's no difference in anybody that's a believer. We're all the same. We're all one. Amen. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. That word propitiation is also elasterion, which actually means mercy seat. Jesus, God set him forth to be a mercy seat, amen, for us. Something between the law and God. The, the mercy seat, that, uh, you all know, you've seen uh, uh, Indiana Jones and... Uh, you know, the last crusade, and so whichever one it was, you don't take the lid off the ark, praise the Lord. It's not a good idea because it looses the law, amen. I mean, that may not have been what they were doing, but that's what that's really all about. Well, Jesus is the permanent mercy seat between the demand of the law and the fulfillment of it, hallelujah. So there's no law for us because we have Jesus as our elasterion, our propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, yeah. that he might be just 
and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Amen? Yes. Where is boasting then? It's excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Nobody gets to boast, nobody gets to brag, nobody gets to say I'm this much better or it just only took about this much grace for me, but it took way more grace for you. No, it took every bit of the grace of God for all of us. Amen. That's the plan. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Can you say praise the Lord for that? Hallelujah. Amen. All right, now, Sheila, Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure of faith is Christ. Praise the Lord. Now, there are two toxic, if you will, heresies, amen, that we should avoid in our lives. Both of them are deadly to your soul. Now, you all know I read a lot of really deep, philosophical, heavy-duty stuff. You know because I tell you that, right? Because I've told you, so it must be true, right? So I'm going to refer to a couple of these books this morning. And the first of these toxic heresies is Dumbo's magic feather. Praise the Lord. You see, Dumbo the elephant can fly. I mean, y'all got kids and grandkids. Surely you, you know something about Dumbo, praise the Lord. Well, he can fly, but he doesn't have the confidence, he doesn't have the courage to fly without believing in a magic feather. I mean, the guy's got the p potential, he just won't do it because he's afraid. He's, he lacks confidence. And so this, this magic feather is the deal for him. Amen? And the second deadly heresy is the little engine that could. <laughs> Amen? Remember him? I think I can. I mean, he, he couldn't get up the hill, but it, but it all changed when he began to say, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Amen? Now, it's, it sounds comical, but the sad truth is, that's how most Christians live their lives. Amen. We, we, we try to get through the hills of life and the problems of life by just trying to take control, be in charge. Amen. And the, the, the world calls this the power of positive thinking. That's not what we're doing. Amen. There is no power in positive thinking. Amen. The, the, not when it comes to the kingdom of God, not when it comes to things that are eternal, things that are everlasting. There's no such thing as the power of positive thinking. Ultimately, there is only power in Jesus Christ. The only real power, the only eternal power, the only unchanging power that has ever existed or will ever exist is in the person of Christ, in Jesus himself. Hallelujah. Confidence in life isn't found in a mirror. Amen. It's found in a risen Savior. Praise the Lord. Dumbo's feather is just a feather. It's powerless. Praise God. We have Christ. We have the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Reigning. Lord of all things. Praise the Lord. Living in us. Imagine that. He's, this God is living inside of us. Hallelujah. I don't need a magic feather. I don't need something else. I don't need anything of me. All I need is to be aware of the Lord God Almighty that dwells inside of me, is capable of doing all things, anything, hallelujah, that I can believe. And then we think that we want or, or think or, or want or, or are somehow going to add to something of God. I mean, that... Good grief, that, that is ridiculous to think that you or I or anybody for that matter is going to add anything to God, that there's something I'm going to do that's going to make God greater, that's going to make God better, that's going to make God more powerful, more real. Reject legalism. Reject 
every add-on. We don't need any pink feathers in this life because we have Christ. Praise the Lord. And He has given us all things, everything that we need. Amen? Let me remind you of something. The ark was built by amateurs with God. The Titanic was built by professionals. Now, when he says, get on board, I'm going to take a close look at what I'm climbing into. Amen? I'm getting on board the ark, hallelujah, where we are safe and secure, amen, from every storm of life, from every situation. The Titanic might have looked really good to the world. It might have sounded unsinkable, but we know it didn't get through one voyage without going down. With all of the ability of man, with all of the, the, the confessions of man, the unsinkable Titanic dropped like a rock when it hit that iceberg. Praise the Lord. But the ark made it all the way through. Hallelujah. And if you're in Christ and Christ is in you, we are secure in the ark. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 1. And verse 3. I'll take an amateur with God anytime over a professional. Yeah. Amen. You give me somebody that trusts God, yeah. and I, I'll trust them. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Before all of the education, beyond all the rest of it, I'm not against education or any of that. I'm just saying, I'd rather have, give me one idiot that loves Jesus, right. and I'll be all right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Yes. Just because the knowledge of him is what does it. Yes. Just knowing Jesus. We don't have to be rocket scientists. We don't have to, we don't have, to have the greatest IQs. We can, David said, I'm wiser than all my teachers. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Right. His ability is all we need. And it's there for us. Praise the Lord. In the gospel, God gives us himself. And he gives us each other. Amen. A threefold cord is not easily broken. See, I don't need to know everything. I just need to know somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I heard a guy talking about this all the time. I don't necessarily agree with everything he says, but I do agree with this. I don't need to have 10,000 friends. I just need to have the right friends. Amen? I don't need to know every banker that there is. I just need to know the one that will loan me money. Amen? That will help me out when I need it. You know what I'm saying? We don't need everybody. We just need the right somebodies. Praise the Lord. And God has a way of directing our path to put people in our path and to put us in the path of other people. Praise the Lord. The Lord has given us both his spirit and a spirit-empowered community. Now, we forget that sometimes because of the kind of culture that we live in and the world as it's been changing over my lifetime anyway is far less gregarious and open and interactive than it used to be. There's a lot of stuff goes on on Facebook that used to always happen on the front porch. You know, nobody has a front porch anymore. We put the decks on the back because we don't want to see anybody out front, praise the Lord, and we don't, want, we don't want them seeing us. And we don't know our neighbors for the most part, you know, unless you've lived there for 35, 40 years, you hardly know who's around you. Plus, they were moving all the time anyway. It's just a whole different dynamic than it ever was uh, as I, uh, I was growing up as a kid. But, but God has, he understands we need family and we need community. And that's why he has a church. That's the purpose for the church, because God has given us empowering abilities by his spirit, but those abilities in and of themselves are not sufficient because we need support. We need other people. We need community as well as God. That's why God said, here's the law. The law is that you love one another. Praise the Lord. We can't really express God without somebody else. I mean, we can't really be a revelation to anybody if we don't have somebody, amen, to be a revelation to. Right. Praise the Lord. So we belong to Christ, and we belong to each other. Now, that gets a little scary, but that's the reality. God didn't save us to go off and live in a cave somewhere or a monastery. 
and just contemplate our own little, you know, small life. He, he has given us his spirit so that we can be family, so that we can be long. Praise the Lord. If we're going to grow, if we're going to mature in Christ, we've got to reject magic feathers and just the, the mere worldly intellectual positivism. Amen? Instead, let me give you an example. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 12. Now this I say that every one of you saith, I'm of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. All right, now let's look at this uh, and see what Luke has to say about this Apollos. Acts chapter 18 and verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. So here's a guy who today would be a top conference speaker. Or he'd be on TBN. He'd be on God Channel. He'd be on the, the Christian channels. We'd be seeing him because he, he was, amen, eloquent and mighty in the scriptures. Amen? So... He, he had all this eloquence and all of this uh, charisma and this attraction people had for him and, and his understanding of the word, but he didn't have his message quite right. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, oh, that theology. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He had scriptures, but he didn't have the theology down. He didn't, ha he didn't really get it completely. Amen. His message wasn't quite, quite right because you, you read where there's, a, there's this missionary couple named Aquila and Priscilla, and uh, they heard Apollos preach. And they realized that he was missing something. So what did they do? Acts chapter 18, verses 26 through 28. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, and when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. These are two, these aren't the two high tech, you know, they're not, they're not the all in demand ministers. They're just two people who love God and who had a revelation. So they expound more perfectly to this big name who people are fighting over who they're following, whether it's Paul, whether it's Jesus, whether it's Apollos. I mean, they're, they're taking this guy pretty seriously. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Now, I don't know what he was preaching before, Aquila and Priscilla got a hold of him, but I know what he was preaching afterwards, grace and Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus was the Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, praise God. Apollos received this revelation, this uh, correction even, if you will, and he didn't get all puffed up. He didn't get all freaked out. He didn't get all bummed out and say, ah, I, you know, you, who are you? I never heard of you two. After all, You've seen me. You've heard me preach big crowds, big masses of people, and here you two come bopping in here, and you're going to show me the way more perfectly? Amen? But the good news is he received it. He wasn't all puffed up. He wasn't all freaked out. He received help. He received revelation from two people who just realized this guy loves the Lord. He just needs a little more information. He needs a little revelation, amen? And he got it, and he received it from brothers and sisters, amen? Why? Because Apollos needed to keep growing. He needed to continue to grow, amen, in revelation and in the knowledge of the Lord and the power of his might, hallelujah. And so do we. We have not arrived. I'm telling you, I'm preaching things today that I didn't preach 10 years ago. It didn't, it didn't just happen in the last 10 years. I just... By the 
Spirit of God and my willingness to not just shut down on whatever God might be trying to say, I've learned some things. I've matured a little. I've grown a little. I haven't arrived. Don't get me wrong. There, as long as we're in this world, there's opportunities to know more of God, to go deeper in God, to find more of God's grace and what God wanting to do in our lives. Amen? We all need to keep growing. Everybody needs to keep growing, and we need an environment where other Christians and non-Christians can come. We need an environment where we can spur on others and others can spur us on. I mean, I got blessed this morning before I ever did anything other than just show up by listening to what others are saying, to listening to what God's dealing with them about, how they're dealing with their situations and their circumstances, the battles that they're in make me feel not so alone in the battles that I'm in. Makes me feel like not the oddball, the, the, the third wheel. Just another believer in Christ fighting the same battles, running the same race, trusting the same God, and believing for the same kind of miracles. Amen. We need each other, and this world needs us. Amen. We need testimonies. We need prayer. We need prayer requests. We need prophecies. We need words of knowledge and words of wisdom. We need this that goes on here before what we traditionally think of as being church. This is as much church and maybe more church than half of what goes on in the traditional end of it. I promise you in these home churches, these house churches that, that, that we're talking about here back in the first century, amen, it, it was, they didn't have a routine. They just came in and, and hoped to be led by the Spirit. And they failed. They got crazy sometimes. Everybody's talking in tongues. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's, it's, uh, we're going to have the Lord's Supper today. And some of them come late, and by the time they got there, the food's gone, and everybody's drunk. Yeah. Hey, I'm talking about a Christian church in the first century in Corinth. Yeah. That's who Paul's dealing with. These are saved people. Yeah. They just don't understand it quite perfectly. Right. Amen. <laughs> They're growing. They're learning. Paul's not rebuking them. He's just saying, just grow in grace. Where sin abounds, grace does that much more abound. It's going to be all right. God's going to lead you, and God's going to guide you, and new people will come along. Hey, they were going to temple prostitutes, these born-again believers. And we get all freaked out about if we smell cigarette smoke on somebody. Give me a break. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't want you to smoke because it's not good for you. But it's not the, it's not the fire of hell that we're smelling. It's Marlboro Light or something, you know what I mean? It's, it's a tobacco, praise the Lord, right? And we, and we, we get panicky, and, and, but read the Bible. Look what Paul was dealing with. He wasn't freaking out. He, he, he established a church. He went off and left it, and these people are going completely nuts by today, you know, by Christians today. Paul doesn't freak out. There's a guy having incest with his father's wife. I mean, it's just crazy stuff. Now, he, he addresses it, but he doesn't say, oh, my God, Satan's got the church. You know, it, it's all about hell now. We just got to, you're just not doing enough. You're, you're not, you're not, uh, I don't see him saying more, anything about getting, the, the whole church needs to go on a fast. <laughs> Throw out your TVs and get a black car. Quit driving those bright colored cars and have, they're just out of, they're hell. Well, it's a little unusual, but I'm, I'm, you know, I've been reading a lot of Dumbo and the little engine that can, so I'm limited in how I'm going to be able to express myself here somewhat. Praise the Lord. Nobody's arrived. Nobody has gotten to perfection. Even Paul, who, by the way, was in the third heaven, saw things he couldn't even repeat. There wasn't even words to describe the spiritual truth and realities that he experienced. This guy, who had conversations with a risen Christ, said, I'm not there yet. Amen? Philippians chapter 3, uh, let's read verses 12 through 16. Philippians 3, 12 through 16. See, the world needs to know that we don't see ourselves as better than them. We see ourselves as saved by grace. It'll take the same amount of grace to save the most wicked, horrible, 
bad behaving, unsaved person as it took for you. It takes the death, burial, resurrection, and the free gift of righteousness for them to be saved. It costs the same for everybody. We didn't get by. It, it wasn't like I got, you know, I really wasn't a horrible, I was a horrible person. I'm just using this as an example. I could say, well, you know, it, it, took, it, it would take way more grace for Adolf Hitler to be saved than it took for me. It makes sense logically, but not supernaturally and not spiritually. I don't believe Adolf got saved. Now, that's just my opinion. But it would take the same thing for him as it took for me. Praise God. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Pray, Lord, keep going to, through verse 16. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The high calling of God. You cannot fulfill the high calling of God outside of Jesus. It's in, it's in Jesus is the only way you're going to get there. Right? right? Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect. Now, as far as God's concerned, we're perfect. Right. We are perfected in Christ. So let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God will reveal even this to you. Right. Praise the Lord. By the power of the Spirit, we pull each other into the reality of the Spirit. By the power of the Spirit, we pull one another into the reality of the Spirit. That's why we gather together. That's why we forsake not the assembling of ourselves together, in, as some do, in, in the last days. Why? Because we are empowered, not just for us, but for one another. Because how many times we come through the church doors and we're really not all that spiritual? You know what I'm saying? We've had a bad day. We've had a bad week. We've had some bad junk. And we're feeling more f earthly and natural than we're feeling spiritual. And we have the Spirit, but we are so overwhelmed by the stuff of the world and the things we've been dealing with and all the stuff and the family and the issues and everything else that we come in here kind of weighted down and burdened with all the, 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 the diseases and, and, and uh, financial situations and, and uh, you know, relational issues and all that that we've been dealing with all week long. Yeah. So we need somebody who is also empowered to remind me of my spiritual reality, right. what the real thing is really all about and where the real power is and where the real change will take place. And that's why we need each other. Right. That's why the world needs us. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's all grace. Amen. When, when the, the empowered Christian pulls another Christian into the spirit of reality, think about it, that's what you're doing all the time whenever you're witnessing to people, when you're just sharing. I don't mean witnessing like, here, believe this or go to hell, but, you know, just sharing God's love and, and God's goodness and we're praying for you and spiritual realities is what I'm saying. Amen? It's... It brings us back, it brings Christians, for sure, back from the big-headedness, amen, the fakeness of, well, I'm so holy, and, you know, you're such a dolt, and you know what I'm saying? You've been around people like that, religious people that are just very boring and, and actually aggravating to be around. But this, what we're talking about, the grace of God, the goodness of God, the love of God, it pulls people back into spiritual reality. It takes this puffed upness of them or this idea that, look, see, I'm way more something in Jesus than you are because of something I've said or done or what have you. It's all bogus, amen? And it's also a way of reminding each other, amen, of, of the gospel realities, and it pulls other people up 
from condemnation and from shame and from guilt. Now, it's odd that the same thing does it. It, it brings down those that are puffed up and think they're really something special, and it lifts up those that feel like they're nothing and can never contribute or be a part of anything. Why? Because the spiritual reality is we're all the same. We are all perfect, but only in Christ. Amen? All right, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. It's all grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2 and verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Paul said, I haven't arrived. I'm not there yet. I'm not perfect. But I'm pressing on to maturity. Not to moral perfection outwardly, but to spiritual maturity. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's, that's how mature Christians think. Yes. Mature Christians don't think like I know more than everybody else. Mature Christians don't act like I've arrived, y'all, I'll be waiting here for you to catch up. I mean, I'm seated with Jesus, you're somewhere on the ladder. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'll be waiting for you hoping, praying that you'll make it. Praise the Lord. But see, mature Christians don't think they need Jesus less. Amen? We realize more and more, the older we get, the longer we live for the Lord, how much we need both Jesus and each other. That's the reason for the church. So we're not isolated. So we're not separated so we're not stuck with our own fears and anxieties and the lies of the devil and the world who do not understand spiritual realities. We need each other. And we need each other more now than we ever have, and we'll need each other more in the future than we do right now. It bothers me that people aren't here that ought to be here. I'm, again, I'll say what I said Wednesday night. Don't misunderstand me. I know we, there's, there's stuff that goes on in all of our lives. We have to be gone. I get it. I'm not picking on anybody about that. I, I was gone for two and a half weeks and enjoyed every day that I was gone. <laughs> I'm glad to be back. I love you all, but, I mean, it was good to get away. And you got vacations you got to take care of. You've got family stuff that sometimes comes up. You've got to deal with it. Uh, we, we're not just a one-dimensional thing, you know. But we need to understand the importance because there are people that are not here just because it's just easier to not be here. Or they think that they really don't have anything to contribute anyway, so what difference does it make? I'm not going to be missed, you know? That's wrong. We need them, and they need us. That's how a church should grow. I don't want it to grow just because, you know, we got some program or something. And I mean, nothing wrong with programs. Believe me, we've had programs. We gave away bicycles. We did this. We had uh, dinners. We had, we've done, you know, plenty. Paid people's utility bills. Strangers would call. This got to be like a hotline for everybody who had a problem financially. Sally will tell you. After you do it for a few people, hey, the word's out. That little church down there. And we did. Cha-ching. Not Jesus, but cha-ching. And, w and I was glad to do it. I, and I've told Sally all along, we still do things now. And I say, it's just seed. It's just seed. It doesn't matter. I'm not looking for a payback. If they borrow it and they don't pay it back, it doesn't matter. It was a giveaway. It was just a free gift. Hallelujah. I, I don't get upset. I don't get mad. I just say, you know, that's the way it is. It's seed. God has more than blessed me, amen, with the little about that I've been able to, to give. Amen. He's more than blessed me beyond anything I ever gave to anybody else. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm not bragging about it. I'm just saying, we've all done it. You know, we all do it. And sometimes the Lord just says, do this. Yeah. Because God wants to do something for him. Yeah. You know, it has nothing to do with me or payback or, you know, gee, what a great guy. It has nothing to do with any of that. I've had people do it to me. I've had people just come and give me something, you know. Yeah. And it, it's just, that's just God. Yeah. Hallelujah. We need Jesus. And we need each other. 
Not just financially, but you know what I'm saying. We, we need support. We need people. We need to know that somebody cares. That God cares. And that's God's way of showing he cares. Praise the Lord. See, our, our culture sells us on the idea that we can be our own hero. Everybody's a superhero. Just get yourself a pair of tights and a mask. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not a hero, there's always a parade coming that yeah. you can probably be part of if you wanted to be. Yeah. So I'll let you sort that out however you want to. We are going out over the Internet, and I could be sued in a matter of minutes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we're, we're, you know, the culture we live in, is, it, it has us believing that we can be our own source. Yeah. That we are the, the change that we're looking for in ourselves. We can make the change. That we can be what we want to be, do what we want to do. You know, Dumbo, and this is the world's view, Dumbo clutched the feather. Read the book. And everybody cheers. Yeah. Not that he could fly, but that he had a magic feather. I mean, everybody went crazy because Dumbo had a magic feather. The little engine changed his thinking, and he got her done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That, friends, is unreality. That is not real. The help that people need is in the gospel and the people of the gospel. Right. Not in self-help, not in positive thinking, not in magic wands or gimmicks, but in the gospel itself and in the people who believe that gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. We help each other. Not with confrontation and blunt force and but with words that are spoken, like have already been said here this morning, spoken kindly, precisely, spiritually. A word in due season. You know? You, you know it's weird how you can have two people with the same problem, or even the same person with this problem, and one day, here's the word to say. The next day, that's not the word to say. You know what I'm saying? You can say the same thing to the same person about the same situation on two different occasions, and it can be all wrong. It can just blow up in your face. The same person who will receive it in love and, ex and, and, and excitement and hope will be the person that will fly in your face like a, you know, like a mad dog the next day. Yeah. So we, but we're led by the Spirit. We know instinctively, innately, we know when to share. If we just allow the Spirit. Because God puts people in our path for a purpose. Amen? But sometimes the first time you meet Him is not the best time. Sometimes it's the only time. But sometimes it's not the best time. You just have to trust the Lord. Amen? Praise the Lord. I, uh, I'll say this, and, and it isn't a rebuke in any way because I struggle with this all the time, and I've talked to Sally about it too. Obviously, things that are going on in our culture with uh, what's accepted and what isn't, most of us have a problem, you know, with those things. But at the same time, being hateful and mean isn't going to change anything. And believe me, these people, Jesus paid the same price for them that he did for us. And he expects us to be as faithful in trying to reach them as somebody was to reach us. Now, I'm not condoning anything. I think you all know me well enough that, that that's not the case. But on the other hand, if it were a a convicted felon, uh, an abusive person, an addicted person, a hateful person, we'd expect that God would want his love expressed so that their life could be changed, so that they don't have to continue down the path that they're in. 
it's all the same. I'm sorry. I, I'm not comfortable with some things as much as I am comfortable with others. I can deal with a drug addict. I've been there, done that. You know what I'm saying? I, I can handle alcoholics. I can handle just mean people because I, I was one. You know what I mean? Right. Things that I don't understand are difficult to deal with. Yeah. But it makes them no less loved by God. Right. God's paid the same price. So somehow, we have to be able to get them contact with them. We need them to be able to come to the church and not feel threatened and not feel intimidated and not feel looked down on. and not. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, we don't appreciate all the stuff that goes on in the world, but we still the world still needs to be saved. And some of them, the only way it's going to happen is in a church setting. So we got to love them. We don't love the sin. We, lo- we just love them. Right. Just love the person that God created and let the Holy Spirit do it. We, it's not our job to do it anyway. Our job is just to love one another. Make it available. The choices are still choices that people end up having to make, ultimately. But I don't think we can disrespect God's creation because of our lack of respect for their lifestyle and the way that they have used that creation, right? Am I making any sense to anybody? I'm not condoning anything. You get, you know, please, you understand. But just because I have some feelings greater about certain behaviors than I have about others doesn't mean God does. It's all sin. It's either sin or it's grace. It's either under the blood, or it's still being exposed to the law. Amen? So I'll trust the Lord to just reach out anytime I can. Listen, I don't think there's, I I don't know of anybody who hasn't been touched in some way by the human condition, if you will. I don't, I mean, you don't have to look very far in your family to find somebody, you know, or a friend or someone down the road. And I'm just saying, I, you know, when I, I think about people that I know, I saw them grow up, I'm baffled. I mean, I'm just stunned. I, I, I can't figure it out. I don't know. I don't know what happens, why, or anything else. All I know is I still have to, lo- I still love that person. I just can't figure out the rest of it. You know what I mean? So we don't just throw our hands up. If it's somebody that's close to us, if it's somebody that, that's a family member or a, you know, a, a niece, a nephew, a cousin, or whatever, we just don't know how to deal with it, but we still try to love them. We still try to learn how can we still interact with this person without, on the one hand, patting them on the back and say, way to go, and on the other hand, not saying, well, you filthy you know, mess. Hey, I think we just owe that to anybody. For God's sake. Praise the Lord. Sorry about that little tangent, but it's true of anybody that comes through the doors. We've had drunks come in here and sit right there and get so excited with the testimonies that he started testifying and every other word was a swear word. But he was just so worked up. Plus he'd had a little drink, but you know what I mean? We could have thrown him out and said, hey, we don't allow any drinking in here. But what, what, what would have that done? I mean, how, you know what? You know, you know what I'm saying? It, it's just so counterintuitive sometimes we think, well, we're not letting drunks in here. By God, that's, this is the one place that the guy needs to be. Yeah. It may be uncomfortable if you have to be the one sitting next to him, you know. But that's the price we pay for being Christians. Might be the only time the guy ever was shown any respect from anybody. I just told him he had to leave the bottle in his bag in the basement, remember? (laughs) Can't drink during church. As soon as it's over, have at it. But, you know, we have to draw the line somewhere, and this isn't happened to be the night we're having communion, so (laughs) he's going to have to stay downstairs, praise the Lord. But he came for a a number of weeks. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's move on. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11.
You know, I'm, I'm more interested in this church being a church than I am anything else, than I am about how many people are here. I want the people that are here to be the church. You know what I'm saying? That we actually operate like a church, as a church. Because that's what the church is. The church isn't the building. The church isn't our theology. The church are the people. That is the church. And the church just needs to be the church. If we'll just be, God will do. I'm, I'm telling you, that is the gospel truth. All we have to do is be the church, and God will do the supernatural. He'll do the miraculous, and he could care less if there's 10,000 people or 10 people. In fact, I think God gets a kick out of the doing it with the 10, just to prove that this isn't about numbers or mass hysteria or just a good program that somebody put together, but it's just God. It's just the Lord. Amen? A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Talk about poetry. But we all know that too, don't we? Amen? You can say, you can, there are times when you're in a situation where you say something and it's like it was so perfect. You knew it didn't come from you. Right? You knew that came from someplace. That, didn't, that wasn't me because I've messed these kind of situations up way too many times. But a word fitly spoken, that just means in the context of whatever's happening, it's exactly the thing that needed to be heard. That's what God wants to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Proverbs 15 and verse 28. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. That's just another way of saying be slow to anger and, or, or quick to, uh, never mind. It, it, it means something, I'm sure. <laughs> slow to speak but quick to love or something, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah I, I've learned. Sometimes it's best to be slow to speak, have conversations with my wife. And sometimes... It's best just not to say the first thing that comes into your mind. Right? Yes. Sometimes you just need to slow down and think about it before you say it. Right? And then sometimes it works, praise the Lord. <laughs> but the heart of the righteous study is to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. Amen? So here's our goal as believers, as the church, praise the Lord. Our goal needs to be to bring grace upon grace. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 4.29. Ephesians 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we have always kind of believed that corrupt communication was like swearing, you know, like swear words or cuss words or something. No, corrupt communication is anything that doesn't edify. Anything that doesn't bring grace into that situation is corrupting. Amen? It's corrupting the circumstance and the situation. No, it's making it break down even more, amen, than it already was. So anytime you're confronted with a situation, your communication needs to be edifying. People, believe me, Christians and sinners alike, they know they're messed up. They don't need you to tell them. They don't need you to prophesy about how stupid they are, how crazy they are, how foolish they are. They, they already know it. They need something positive. It's like when the little kid, take a grandkid, that just does something really destructive. They already know they're being destructive. Believe me, even if they're only three years old, they know. But instead of saying, you little moron, why are you eating the couch? You know, you say, well, Bubba, let's go play ball. Right? And there's no point in making a big deal out of the thing that the bad thing that they're doing. Let's, let's get the attention to something else. Get their mind off of that negative thing. Let's do something edifying. Let's do something that'll build them up, make them feel like I don't need to eat the couch. I, you know, I got other gifts, praise the Lord. I can catch the ball. I can chase the dog. You know what I mean? 
I'm just talking about a grandchild. A fictitious one, of course, but <laughs> grandchild. But we're all dealing with relationships. We're all dealing with individuals. We're all dealing with interactions with other people. And sometimes they're eating the couch. I mean, sometimes they're tearing your stuff up. They're, they're messing up your life, right? <laughs> Edify them. Build them up. Find something. You can find something positive, amen, to get their mind off their destructive behavior. Right. And God loves you, you know? God cares about you, even with all of your mess. He loves you. He wants you to know how much he loves you. And for that to happen, you have to acknowledge him. You've got to admit that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who will diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. So we want to edify so that we can minister grace to the person who's listening to us. Amen? See, too many Christians live in self-imposed solitary confinement because they don't think they really need other people. They just, I believe God, so that's all I got to have. That's not the way of the kingdom of God. It's just not the way it works. The blood of Jesus washed over his entire body, every one of us. We died with him, and when he rose from the dead, we all rose in newness of life, every one of us. Praise the Lord. Jesus did not die for some amorphous blob of strangers, a disembodied, formless bunch. He didn't die for a loosely affiliated group of service attenders. He died for his brothers and sisters. And that gospel unites us. It makes us one. Like it or not, that's the reality of what the gospel has done. It has made us heirs, brothers and sisters, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He has made us family. Praise the Lord. And I'll tell you the truth, blood is thicker than water. And there's no blood thicker than Jesus. Amen. He has made us of one. And we need to honor one another that way. We need to respect one another. We need to want to be a contributing factor in the family. A positive effect. Amen? Well, let's close with a couple of scriptures here and we'll wrap up. Colossians uh, chapter 3 verses 11 through 16. Colossians 3 11 through 16. Praise the Lord. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, this is the church, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy, beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Does, anybody, does this sound like family to anybody? You know, we forbear, we do lots of stuff with family we don't do with anybody else. But other people, they've been written off. You know, we're just not messing with them anymore. But this is what we do with family. We forbear one another. We forgive one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. This is the grace on grace. He's graced us with forgiveness. It doesn't cost us anything to share that same grace. It was freely given. Amen. And above all these things, put on charity which is the bond of perfectness. Now, that word is actually love. We know. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Remember all the peace we were talking about? You want to have peace? This would be a good way to start. The peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. That's what we do here every service. Praise the Lord. That's why we do it. That's the, that's the purpose. That's who we are. That's what we are. Amen? 
Let me show you something else. You know, it is us, you and I, it's us, the church, where we best glorify God. I'm telling you, 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 this is where it can happen, and it can then flow over out of you. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Out of this can flow, amen, the glory of God. But this is where it happens the most frequently and the most pronounced. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 15. We'll close with this. Romans chapter 15, verses uh, 5 and 6. Now the God of patience, I'm glad he is, and consolation, grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Jesus Christ, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the, that's, you know, that's a part of the commission of the church. I know it's to go out and baptize and win the loss, but when we get them here, when we have the relationship, when we have the opportunity, this God of patience and consolation, may he grant you to be patient and consoling. That's what he's saying. Like-minded, one toward another. Amen? According to Christ Jesus. So that with one mind and one mouth, amen, we glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I promise you, where God is glorified, miracles happen. They just happen. Amen? Dark becomes light. Weeping becomes joy. Yeah. Sadness becomes dancing. Right. Amen? Yeah. And it's all His work. Yeah. This is the reason for churches. Yeah. In spite of everything else that we've been taught and kind of led to believe, that is the reason for the church. Yeah. To edify one another. To encourage one another. Not to beat each other up. Not to bring you in here and tell you how bad you are and all the sin that's in your life. We could spend weeks doing that. <laughs> and we wouldn't even have got past Sally and I, praise the Lord. So it's all good. Amen. If we really begin to see it the way God sees it, sin is not a problem for God. It's just getting those sinners to him. He, he, he can handle the sin. He can handle any sin, every sin, all sin. He already has, in fact. We just need to get people to a place where they can acknowledge it and respond to it. And for that to happen, we have to be like God. We have to be consoling. We have to be patient. We have to be loving. You can't be schizophrenic Jesus. I mean, you know, Jesus can't be one thing and you're something else and claiming that that's Jesus. It doesn't work that way. You can't say Jesus loves you, by grace you're saved, and then spend the next hour telling somebody how screwed up they are, and because they didn't do this, or because they might do that, or they may think about this, or they have done this, then, you know, come on. For God so loved the world that he gave. Well, now he still loves the world, and he's giving the church, which is the body of Christ. So let's represent him, amen, to one another and to everybody else, and let God add to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. That's his business. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I love you all. Let's, let's just pray for this nation. Amen. When you pray, remember our leaders. That's why the Bible tells us, pray for those who have charge over you. Amen. Because there's a lot of disconnect going on in the world, but they need Jesus too. And we need to be an influence in a positive way. We're going to love those who have the charge over us, even the ones that we don't like, praise the Lord, and pray for God to move on their lives. Listen, we say, well, I don't think they're even a Christian. It doesn't matter. He made Nebuchadnezzar do some stuff. Yeah. Amen. He, he doesn't, they don't have to be Christians to be obedient. God can get them to do what he wants them to do if, if enough people are praying and believing God. The end result is, I was telling Debbie, Psalms chapter 2, read it sometime tells about the you know the foolishness and the crazy stuff that's going on and then the but the what I love about it is the very last line of the last verse it says trust in him that's what we do that's what we end up that's where we always end up at is at the beginning
just trust the Lord. Amen? And he shall bring it to pass. Praise God. God bless you. Have a great week. Amen. Just, just be a grace person all week long and just give grace for grace. Hallelujah. And watch God bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Yeah.